To begin the journey of syncing, let us assume we have two machines that you would like to synchronize files. We'll refer to these machines as the devices. So the first step is to install SyncThing on both the machines and configure them parallel. If you can't access both machines simultaneously, you can still proceed step by step. Now let's dive into the step by step process of setting up SyncThing. We'll simply open the browser here and we'll open the website SyncThing.net. SyncThing is a continuous file synchronization program. It synchronizes files between two or more devices. So these devices can be on your network or it could be on your internet as well. So depending where you want to transfer. So instead of depending on the cloud service providers like Dropbox, Google Drive or any other platform which is available these days. So your data is your alone. If you are concerned about data privacy, if you want to use your own file synchronization platform, then SyncThing is the best way to go forward. Without wasting the time, we'll simply start using it. I'm on my Windows computer right now. And in order to install, you can even click here on downloads or we'll go to download section. So there are two user friendly applications which are pre built and available for you. And these are bundled for Mac OS and this is bundled for Windows. If you are an advanced user, you can go with the complex configuration. If you don't want to go with much complexity, then you can simply go with the same thing Windows setup or Mac OS setup. Both of this I will explain you in this particular tutorial. You have to see this video till end. We will also do Android setup. I'll show you how in Android we can install and how we can start synchronizing the data from Android device to any of the device on the network. You can also go for the base sync thing. It has various options available. So we'll go for the pre-built packages here. First of all, we'll start with sync thing Windows setup. The moment you click on Windows setup, it will open the Git here. So if you go down here. This is the guide and here in download section, you will see Windows setup releases are here. So if I click here, Latest release will be available here version 1.27.6. Previous versions are also available, but we'll go with the latest release. We trust this particular source. So I will download this. The download is completed. I will simply click this to run the setup wizard, whether you want to install it for all users or for current user only. As I'm only the user on this particular system or this particular laptop, so I'll be installing for this user only. It is, of course, open source, freely available. So click next. So here is the installation path. Uh, we'll click next and here a shortcut of program sync thing, which is fine. Click next here. 12 hours means that it will try to upgrade after every 12 hours. So default is 12 hours. So otherwise, if you want to disable, you will type zero. So it will not check for the updates. Graphical user interface is the web GUI. In fact, it will open in 127.0.0.1 or the local host at port 8384. I won't change this port. Until and unless your this port is already being used, then you can change it. Otherwise, 8384 is fine. Here is the relay, which is by default enabled. The reason of enabling the relay here is that if there are multiple devices which are available on sync thing and one of the device is not able to respond, this relay will help the communication to take place. In my case, I'll be using this as relay. So we'll continue. So I want this service to start automatically the moment power is connected. And if the power is not connected, I don't want to waste the battery because I might be traveling. I may not need to synchronize the file. But when I'm on my network, I will be connecting the power and I want the system to synchronize because while synchronization, of course, the battery gets consumed because the service will be running. So I will start automatically if only if the computer is running on AC power and start sync thing after installation. Yes, I want to start it and start sync thing automatically when the computer is logged in. Next. Now, this is the summary here. Install. Now, once the installation is completed, it will open the web browser. Upon the first launch, sync thing will generate the configuration files. It will also start the admin GUI in your browser locally. The admin GUI can be accessed via localhost port 8384. So this is the default port. I'll continue to this. The moment you log in for the first time, message will pop up to share the anonymous reporting. I don't want anonymys reporting even to be shared with the syncthing.net. Click no here. Graphical user interface authentication. So you have to set up the user ID and password. Of course, if you are using on your own network where nobody else is accessing the network, then you may not need to set up the password, but it is always a good idea to set up the password. So I'll be clicking on setting and here in GUI, I will provide the user ID and I'll provide the password. I will not go to other details right now and save. Now it will ask me user ID and password. So I'll be entering the user ID and password here. Whatever setting you are doing, these are being stored in the app data folder. So I will show you that if you go to local app data and this sync thing has all this data here, you can see in app data local sync thing. So all the certificates that you will be enabling, all the configuration, 
So whatever password you have changed for web UI, whatever devices will be connected and all of that configuration will be stored here. So if you uninstall the application, definitely the app data will not be deleted. And if you reinstall the application, if you update the application, all the data will be stored here. This was just an information that I wanted to share with you so that in future, if you want to uninstall and reinstall, so your old information will be available there. Now you can see here that the moment I install it, I will see on the left side, here is the default folder, this particular folder, which is available in C user sync. So I can go into edit and I can remove this folder. Even if I don't want this folder to be used as default folder, I will add a new folder here, give it a folder name, Amjad sync. I will give it a name like this. Folder ID will automatically come here. You can change it. And here I'll be changing the directory. So I can create any other folder. For example, I created a folder here, C data sync thing. So I want this folder to be used, which will be C data sync thing. And here. Now, this particular folder is showing as unshared. The reason of unshared is because there is no other device on the network. I can go here and edit and I can click on sharing. But right now, you can see there is no device right now where i will be able to share this folder with we will need to add the remote devices then only it will be shared files file versioning whether you want to have the file versioning or not depending upon how much storage you want to use for the file versioning i will not go with the file versioning otherwise you can choose so trash can be file versioning simple file versioning or i want to keep this simple if some of the files should not be synchronized so a file called .stignore can be created complete documentation of this pattern is available in the documentation you can click that and you can see the details over there and then is the advanced what type of folder it is whether it is send or receive or send only or receive only will it do the random pull or it will do the alphabetic pull or oldest first or newest first we'll keep this default and we'll save it on the right side, you can see these are the device details and this is the device identification. If I click here, it will open the QR code and it will be device identification. And even I can go into action here and show my ID. So it will display the QR code and the device ID of this particular device. So this device, which is my laptop, the ID of this will be available here in action and show ID. On other device, I need to connect it using this code. I can also add the remote device from here if I know the identification of other devices. So I will simply enter the device ID and the name of the device. So that device will be added over here. So on other computer where you will do the installation in the same way. Once the installation is done, you will simply add the remote device by pasting the device ID. Right now I'll be using TrueNAS and in TrueNAS also I can use the sync thing of course i can install it on any other windows computer also where the installation process will be same it's only for the sake of this tutorial i'm using TrueNAS, but you can use any other platform so i'll be just showing it to you let me log into TrueNAS, and i'm using TrueNAS scale i can install the apps and these are in fact the containerized applications i'm running one of the applications here which is pihole i'll be discovering the new apps and here i'll search for sync thing the sync thing is available here version 2.0.5 so i'll click this here this gives you a lot of information here all the screenshots are there definitely we'll go with the step-by-step -step tutorial and we'll understand how we'll do it so i'll click on install and then i'll simply install this here you go sync thing is running right now it has started and all the application services are running so i'll just click here on sync thing and here you can see web portal the moment i'll open the web portal it will open the same configuration here i will click no so i'll be simply going here in settings and i'll again go to gui of sync thing which is on true nas i'll be providing the same user id and password and if i log in again i will need the user id and password to log in here i'll enter my user id password and now i'm on this particular page now you can see its identification is different and the identification of my Zenbook is different. I will show these both side by side right now. So instead of creating folder, even I don't need to create the folder initially. What I'll do, I have two options here. Either I can add the remote device here or I can add the remote device here. Both ways it is possible. I will be clicking on any of the devices. For example, I'll click add device in my TrueNAS installation. I'll click here. Now it is asking me to add the device ID. It is also detecting that nearby device ID is here, but I won't be using that. I will simply go here, show device ID, and I will copy this here. And then I will be pasting it over here and then save. The moment I save, it will send the message to the device that 
there is a device which is trying to connect to you i will click on add device now the moment you add the device it will say okay what will be the name of this device i will use it true nas sync thing which i already added this as a device id in my true nas installation and save now you see that device has already been added here also the device ddbz x the same device id is there so both the devices are connected right now if i show you the full screen here you can see connected and it is unused right now unused means that there is no synchronization taking place right now devices are connected but why we have connected this device of course we want to synchronize the folders and where you want to synchronize the folder which folder you want to synchronize as i mentioned that i want to use this folder to be synchronized on other devices on the network now this particular folder is showing as unshared the reason of unshared is because there is no other device on the network i can go here and edit and in edit i'll just go and remove the folder so that in both the devices there is no folder available initially so here on both side now you can see that these both devices are connected right now so i can add the folder here in any of the devices i can i added it earlier but i will be adding a folder here in truenas and in truenas my folder name is sync and here folder name will also be i will be using folder id as sync and sharing right now is not enabled i will just simply create this folder here in truenas if i go into truenas in sync thing and in sync thing i can log into command line interface and here i can look for where if you see here what is the location of this folder i'll just show you here edit it is into var sync thing and inside sync thing the folder name is sync so i'll go into cd space var slash sync thing and inside sync thing there is a folder called sync so i will be going to folder sync here right now there is no file available i can create a file called i will just give it a name touch and it will be true nas underscore file so if you see this file is created here its name is true nas underscore file let me see the file here true nas underscore file this is one file which i have created inside the folder which is right now shared this is the folder which is created here i'll be simply clicking here edit and i will be sharing this folder now with amjad zen book and save the moment i click save it will send a message here and it will mention that true nas sync wants to share a folder called sync do you want to add i will say yes add it and where you want to synchronize this to of course as i mentioned that i already have one folder which i created this one i want to synchronize it with this particular folder so instead of creating a new folder i will be using this folder over here see data sync thing and save now you can see that the file has been started synchronizing so this is synchronized with the truna sync thing and truna sync thing also has the same folder which is being synchronized here the folder path is sync here the folder path is desync thing data so my desync thing data is now synchronizing with this particular folder if i see the list of files now so the file which i created here in my folder so test was the file which was created truenas file i created on sync thing now you can see both the files are synchronized together so if i create any new file suppose i create this particular file here these two files now these two files are created in my computer in my local computer if i go back here see the list of files you can see here all these files which i created there in the zen book are available here as well so this way the files will be synchronized between two devices which are on the network one of the device is true nas another device is laptop in both the devices i created folder and both the folders are synchronized with each other it is all up to you how you want to synchronize the folders so here on the left side you can see here that the folder that i created this particular folder sync thing in data sync thing i can add any files now and it will be automatically synchronized to the sync thing true nas sync thing and if you go back here this is the folder which is created inside this application so you can see that cd space var sync thing and slash sync this is the folder where all my files will be stored you can even map it to your uh, data sets also which i have explained in the true nas video so i will not be going into much details that wrap ups our tutorial on sync thing if you found this guide helpful in getting started with the file synchronization using sync thing please subscribe to the channel
If you want me to cover any specific aspect of sync thing, mention them in the comment section below. I'll definitely help you out. See you next video. Take care and goodbye.